Greetings, my friends, and welcome to the weekend sermon. And remember, the church is not some whitewashed building where preachers preach off of iPads and off of poisoned versions of the Bible and teach jive and don't teach the truth. And <coughs> that's not church. Church is anywhere where two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name, which is where it is right here. And welcome to all the regular attenders and the visitors as well. This sermon today, and again, you can see, uh, as of last week, I got really, uh, I'm really getting hardcore with last day sermons, my friends. We are in the last of the last of the last of the last of the last days. And sadly, few Christians can see that, few are awake, but I'm going to keep putting the word out. And I'm putting out the sermon on uh, both of my channels, uh, the Doc Kids and also the 24-hour news headline. I'm modifying the sermon uh, briefly at the end, just cutting off a little bit at the end because YouTube won't let you uh, upload the same video. <clears throat> but it's so important now, I'm putting it on both my channels, all over Facebook, wherever I can, because people need to realize that time is short. The signs are everywhere. The signs are everywhere you look that we are in the last of the last of the last days. There's not much time left anymore, my friends. So again, as today's sermon says, what will most Christians be doing seconds after the rapture? Hint, they won't be in heaven. And I know that most uh, won't hear that, most won't listen to me, they won't receive the Word of God because they're so dumbed down and they're so spiritually illiterate and biblically illiterate that they have no clue what they're talking about. They just spew lies and half-truths and just spout off stuff that they have no idea what they're talking about. I know what God's Word says, and I know that God's Word says at least 250 scriptures that I've gathered that you have to repent of your sins after you're saved if you want to go to heaven. But see, most of the church believes the lie Satan started in the Garden of Eden. See, he told Adam, he told Eve, that, hey, you're not going to surely die if you eat that fruit. And see, Eve thought that she was going to die physically from eating that fruit. But Satan knew that she would die spiritually that day. And she and Adam both died spiritually that day, cast out of the garden, <coughs> out of God's presence. They lived for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years after that. But their spiritual death was that day. And see, that worked so well in the Garden of Eden, he's using it now on the dumbed-down apostate church. And they're buying it hook, line, and sinker because, see, they want to live a life of however they want to live. They don't want to repent. And this is, what, this is what's really sad. They say, well, you know, uh, you're crucifying Jesus all over again by saying that, uh, that you have to repent, and you're saying Jesus isn't good enough. What I'm saying is, the Bible says at least 250 times in Scripture that I've found that you have to repent. It's God's Word. It's not Paul kid twisting or changing anything. I'm telling you what God's Word says, and I've said it like a broken record, like a parrot, and I'll keep saying it until I'm raptured or dead, because believe me, your blood will never be on my hands, my friends. It'll be on your own head. I can assure you of that, because I have told you countless times. But the rapture, the harpazo, the catching away is going to happen. Whatever you want to call it, again, so many Christians say, Oh, there's no such thing as a rapture. Look in the original Greek and Hebrew transcript. It's called the harpazo and catching away, which translates to rapture. And again, my brain hurts so many times in trying to deal with Christians who are just so clueless. They have the discernment of a empty snail shell that's been baking out on the beach. So when the harpazo rapture catching away happens, <clears throat> and the few Christians are gone, and the children and babies are gone, most Christians, I've said many times, are going to be really, really going crazy at first. They're going to run to the altar. They're going to beg for forgiveness. They're going to try to ask Jesus Christ for one more chance, but there are no other chances. But then here's what's going to happen then. A couple things are going to happen. One, they're going to look around. They're going to see all their favorite YouTube pastors, all the fake phonies on YouTube, on Twitter, on Daily Motion, on anywhere you can think about, Facebook. They're going to see them, and they're going to see all their buddies. They're going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out, time out. That wasn't a rapture or catching away or harpazo because only the bad Christians are gone. We're all still here, so it couldn't have been. And then they're going to hear Obama tell the whole world that it was the aliens that took us. They're going to say, oh, yeah, right. Obama's right. It was the aliens that took Paul Kidd and all of his ilk. Those Bible-thumping, holy war, Jesus freaks, those goody-two-shoe Christians took them all away. And then, since they didn't believe it happened, then when Obama starts rolling out the mark of the beast, slowly but surely, they're going to fall right into that. This, they're going to say, this can't be the mark of the beast because the harpazo catching away a rapture didn't happen. It's not the mark of the beast. I, I can take this safely. 
And by doing that, they marry Satan and they damn themselves to hell forever and ever in the lake of fire after that, after Judgment Day. And it's going to be such a sad time. You see, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past and present only. When we, when we get saved, he died for all of our sins, past and present only, the Bible says. The sins after that, we have to repent. We're not doing works. We are repenting. The way the Bible says, again, at least 250 times, it says we have to. We aren't adding anything to what Jesus Christ did. That's already been done at the cross. Past and present, all those sins are forgiven when you, when you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and save your soul. But after that, you have to repent. See, that's where Satan has got the, the church buffalo. That's where the great apostasy falls in. Because the church is so blinded, they're, they're clueless as to what's going on. And the saddest part is, after Jesus died and rose again on the third day and praised the Lord went back to heaven, he left us, left us to, to, to share his good news, the Great Commission. But few Christians share it, and even fewer understand what it means. They don't have a clue what the Bible says. They're too lazy. They're too busy trying to be the head and not the tail. They're trying to be prosperous. They don't care that we're living in a world filled with unsaved people dying and going to hell and with backslidden Christians dying and going to hell as well. The church, and, and I've, I've broke the numbers down, I've crunched them over the years, and I believe with all my heart that less than 3%, probably less than 2% of people who call themselves Christians are actually ready, non-backslidden, ready to go to heaven when Jesus Christ uh, comes back for the rapture or harpazo catching away. That means that 97, 98, 99% of Christians will be right here on earth. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be terrible. I've asked myself many times, how can the marriage supper of the Lamb with all these Christians, it, it would just be mind-boggling the size of it. But then I understand that it's going to be a small number because few Christians are ready. Narrow is the way, straight is the gate, and few shall enter. Not all that come to me and say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into heaven. Many will come to Christ on that day and say, didn't we work miracles in your life? Didn't we cast out demons in people's lives? And he'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He's not saying I never knew you, that you've never been saved. He's saying that it's like I never knew you because you're not repenting of your sins. And, and Jesus Christ can't be around that sin. And see, so many Christians try to say, well, you know, we're not perfect and we can't help but sin. That's baloney. We aren't perfect. And yes, we do sin, but we have to repent of that sin afterwards. That's the whole key. They're too proud, cocky, haughty, and arrogant to repent. And Satan's got them buffaloed. He's got them fooled totally. It's just sickening to me. Bottom line is this. Your time's running out. Blink your eyes. That's how fast, the twinkling of an eye, Christ is going to bring his bride home. And if you're not ready, you're here for seven years of hell on earth where two-thirds of all humans will die the most grotesque, awful, horrific deaths possible. You'll be in misery for seven-plus years of pure hell on earth. Why would you even go through all of that, unsaved and backslidden Christians? Why would you go through all that? Tonight's the night. Today's the day. This is the weekend. Repent. Pray the prayer with me that I'm about to pray. Do the six steps that I have in the box below the video along with the prayer. If you can't pray it right now, pray it as soon as possible because, again, no one's guaranteed even the next day, hour, minute, or second of your life. So if you are unsaved or a backslidden Christian, pray with me now before your time runs out. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. Go back to heaven and be at the right-hand side of the Father to make a place for your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins, wash my heart white as snow, come live in my heart, make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King, and the precious name I ask it, amen. You pray that prayer, Jesus says, that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. So let me to pray for you, contact me, and I will pray for you every day without fail. And, and remember, my friends, these sermons are going to be hitting hard, hitting heavy, and home until I'm raptured or dead. It's time for people to understand the gravity of what we're facing. Well, most are going to be facing here, so it's horrific. Remember, witness and pray for the lost night and day. It's our job. If you're not doing it, start doing it now. And if you are, great. And look up our Dipshin Draw Nye. We fly soon. You guys take care of yourselves. May the Lord bless you. And I'm going to give a little pause here so when I cut the video off, I won't cut off anything. You guys take care of yourselves. Bye.